Hello everyone, in this tutorial I will be demonstrating how to work with Adeco procedures. A procedure is how to manufacture a CAD design. Here on the first column we see a project card just created by the import of an Adeco CAD design. It is composed of four different materials of which one material has already been moved to the third column where we will be calculating the toolpath. In order to go to the toolpath setup, click on this button. Here we see an empty list of procedures for the job 17 and also all the plates with all the parts nested. Let's go back to the first plate. In order to manufacture a design, we first need to create a procedure by clicking on this plus button and giving the procedure a name. Let's call it ADECO, which will remind me that I should utilize this specific procedure whenever I have a design to be manufactured coming from ADECO as my favorite CAD tool. When I select the procedure, as you can see, some buttons become available. We will come back to them in a few seconds. Let's go into the procedure. Now the column shows us an empty list of layers for the procedure called ADECO, as you can see here. Next, we need to import layers from the specific design we just imported. This is gonna be a one-time only setup and it won't be repeated again. This setup will be saved under the procedure named ADECO and whenever I import a design project from ADECO it will be used again and again without any modification to it, so long as the manufacturing requirements do not change. For any other CAD tool you might have or for any other different way of manufacturing you would like to follow, we recommend you to create procedures for each of them too, instead of modifying an old one. This would make your daily routine of manufacturing much faster. We imported all the layers. I would like the panel layer to be processed as the last one. Here the processing is performed starting from the top to the bottom. So if I'd like the groove layer to be processed first at the very beginning for some reason, usually specific to what is being manufactured and material as well as the machine in use, I just need to hold it here and move upwards. We can also change the sequence of processing for the other layers as well. This list shows the layers, these are the names of the imported layers and these are the operation types that they are assigned to. In order to go in the layer setup, click on the corresponding icon. I'd like the groove layer to have the operation type of groove and I'd like to make this groove or channel with a specific tool, which needs to have been already installed in my machine. Please see the machine setup video for more details. Let's select 8mm end mill for the operation. I can ask this operation to get the depth information from the geometric entity in the design or I can overwrite the original by entering manually a value in this field. Let's ask ADECOCAM to gather this information from the project as it is. Coming to the holes, I'd like to assign all the holes the operation type of multi-drill for a very basic reason. If the CNC machine is capable of drilling multiple holes at once, that would save a lot of time during manufacturing process. Therefore, I'd like all the holes to have the operation type of multi-drill for this specific procedure that we named ADECO. By the way, let me open a parenthesis here to introduce you the pinpoint error checking feature of ADECO CAM. As you can see here, there's an exclamation mark which propagates through all the levels in the user interface. As we move up, the procedure has at least one error. You can either click on the exclamation mark and see all the errors for the selected procedure or you can dive in and follow the exclamation mark until the end where you can see the exact location. This makes it easy to fix configuration issues. Let's follow the exclamation mark. This specific error message tells me that a tool must be explicitly selected. Even though a tool is visible here, it must be explicitly selected by the user such that there is no ambiguity in the setup. Once done, the exclamation mark disappears. Let's close the parenthesis and finalize the setup with the panel layer. For the panel layer, I'd like the operation to be a contour and I'd like to process it with a 35mm tool. I will not check this get depth from entity checkbox and enter a value manually here. This is because the plate material I have has a specific thickness which might be different than that used in the original design. 
I can also arrange how the tool will approach and leave to and from each part. Let's have an angled entry with some distance both for approach and leave points. The image in the middle provides visual feedback that confirms what I should expect from this setup. Now setup is completed. In order to calculate and create a toolpath for all the selected layers for all the plates and parts, I just need to click on this button. This calculation might take some time for large projects and at the end of it we can see the toolpath in magenta color. I can inspect the toolpath visually against any unexpected issues before actual manufacturing as the machine code is going to correspond to this visible toolpath. This looks a bit complicated as everything is visible at the same time. Let's isolate one layer from the rest. I click on this button to make some other hidden functions available. We would like to see only the holes with 8mm diameter, so I uncheck and disable all the other layers, but the one we would like to see. Recalculate the toolpath to update the display. Now we see the toolpath for only the holes with 8mm diameter, and I can visually inspect whether there's an error in the procedure setup or everything is in place and as expected. It seems to be okay. Let's see what happens if one of the settings has an error. We will check this checkbox to introduce an error due to otherwise correct setup and see how to detect it visually through inspection. Let's recalculate the toolpath. In cases like this one, a mistake in the setup can easily be detected for a given project file and a procedure and such an error needs to be corrected only once as the changes are instantly saved to disk for future users. As one can see, the tool does not go through the material but stays on the surface of the material. The depth of the geometric feature is zero, so there is no hole. Let's correct this mistake and recalculate the toolpath to see that the holes have now depth. You can inspect one by one each of the layers by isolating them from the rest as I just showed. Once you are sure all the layers are processed correctly, enable all the layers back and recalculate the toolpath for all the layers at once. Finally, for the selected machine, we'd like to generate machine-specific NC code. Do it by clicking on this button. The NC code shows up here on the right-hand side. Once again, before the actual manufacturing process, you can go through the code and inspect visually against any possible errors. If things look OK, save the NC code files and send them to the machine for actual manufacturing. There will be one file for each plate and for each side in case of double-sided plates. Now we have a procedure already prepared. We can now utilize this procedure without any modification for other designs as I claimed at the beginning. We will demonstrate that now. Let's import another project from my favorite design tool Adeco 17. The project card appears on the first column. Take one of the materials for nesting to place the parts onto the plates. and move the job to the third column where we will be calculating the toolpath using our already prepared procedure. This was from the first project and this is from the one we just imported. Here all one needs to do is to select the procedure and click on these two buttons in order to create toolpath and generate machine code. This is how easy it is to manufacture a design once a procedure is correctly set up in Adeco Chem. Thanks for watching.